Hello folks, we're here. We are doing another X-State Q&A. I'm really excited to have everyone here. I'm really excited to talk more about this stuff. Uh, I did the first stream of this on Wednesday and I really enjoyed myself. But I feel like today I'm gonna enjoy myself even more because we're on Twitch. And because we're on Twitch and not on Periscope, then Twitch is gonna enable me to see your comments and enable us to talk and have a bit more back and forth and talk more about X-State and the wonders it brings. So if you're here, hello, Aldo, come say hello in the chat. Uh, and let me know as well, um, by way of introduction, let me know, first of all, that you're here, hello. And let me know, out of 10, how comfortable you feel with X-State in general. I'd love to know sort of where I need to pitch this and where, uh, what you guys especially want to know about, um, about state management and especially global state management, which is what we're looking at today. But first of all, let's get started with kind of getting up to speed with where we are. I have this repo which I've posted in the chat. Hopefully you can, uh, hey, 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 Matt, how you doing? Um, I have have this repo here which has a couple of machines in it. It's, it's TypeScripted up, it's in Next. So we've got these kind of things like a um, underscore app.tsx which we're gonna spend some time in today. I've got two pages. I've got a payment wizard page which we created the uh, machine for last time and we have a login page which I've kind of created separately. For those who were here last time it's prettified up a little bit um, so it looks a little bit more fancy and we're using the xState inspector to kind of look at and introspect our machines as we're using them. So today I want to add a bit more focus on the global state and because we don't want any old bugger making payments we actually want to have some authentication state so the way we're going to do that is we're going to have a kind of global spot in our application which is going to work out whether the user is logged in or logged out and if they're logged in then it needs to go and grab some data so let's talk about this because my plan is for this is to draw out this state machine first of all so for those who kind of are a bit new to xState we can um, we can kind of build up the state machine and build up our knowledge and then we also need to be able to put this somewhere in our app because this oh my god my cats are going crazy love it they're two black and white cats and they're fighting the crap out of each other right now Oi! Oi! anywho so here are our requirements for first of all this login state machine that we got we've got the user must be able to log in log out and when they do first kind of get into the application we need to work out and um, if their JWT is expired so what we're going to do is let's define some terms first of all I would say that global state and truly global state is anything that starts when the user enters the browser and finishes when the user exits the browser tons of exceptions but for this kind of for what we're thinking here we kind of want this state to exist pretty much all the time that the user is in our application. So let's plan with that in mind. Now, when we're planning a state machine, we want to be able to know kind of, um, oh, we've got a new follower, hey, 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 JTask. I've been having some really good chats with JTask in the um, in the XState Discord, actually, the stately Discord, which could someone be so kind as uh, either Matt or Jay or anyone who's in the Discord to post the link in the chat? That'd be super useful. So anyone who wants to join in, please join in. Um, so we've got some basic requirements here when it's when you're planning a state machine it's so crucial to be able to think about all the points in time that your state machine needs to represent because that's going to kind of give you a sense of what states need to be represented so let's have a timeline for and um, the moment that's kind of got me in my head is when the user first logs in to the browser um, but Let's hold that for a second. Let's do the obvious ones first. We know that in our state machine, we're gonna to need to represent the user as being at some point logged in and then at some point logged out. I'm using Excalibur for this, by the way, in case you've not seen this tool before. Um, so let's box those in because we know that those are kind of set. Now, how does the user get from being logged in to logged out? Well, we probably need an event of some kind, a log out event. So let's draw that with a diagram there. That's how they go from login to logged out. And what kind of event is this? I would say it's like a user action, right? The user is going to press log out and then they're going to be logged out. Makes sense. And how do they go from logged out to being logged in? Well, they're going to need to log in, right? 
so far we've got kind of like a toggle thing going on which is yeah they're like two different actions but really it's just sort of like toggling whether they're logged in or logged out I'm not gonna like I could technically like change these events to being toggle log in toggle logged out but I think this is more idiomatic and makes more sense so we've got when the user is logged in and when the user is logged out but we don't have that first very moment when they go into the browser and we need to check if they're logged in so how are we gonna manage that let's add in a new state and just that state is going to represent that first second when they're when we're checking so we're going to go checking if logged in now that state what it's going to do is it's basically going to check in the browser because I don't actually have like a, a cognito server set up oh hey jtask stately discord nice one thanks Matt um, we don't have like a, a cognito server set up or anything like that. All we're going to do is we're just going to plant a fake JWT inside the browser for now. Might hook it up later. And we're going to check if that, uh, if that key has kind of expired or not. So what we do then is we're in the checking if logged in state. So that's the first second we log into the app. How do we know what's going to get us to logged in? Probably we need to draw this arrow here. And it's going to be an event. What should we call this event? I'm going to ask the audience. What would you call this event? Uh, when this is like a success event for when you know that the user has logged in. So like JWT success or um, I don't know report user logged in. Report user is able to log in. How would you express this? I'm going to kind of hold on to my thoughts for a second and see if anyone pipes up because we know that we need one here we also know that we need one here because if the JWT has expired then we're going to need to kind of um, we're going to need to uh, basically log the user out and bump the user so they can't see anything I'm going to go with login, login success yeah that's pretty good that's pretty close to what we have in already right this is for when the user is like first in the JWT or first like checking the JWT I would probably, this is quite a tricky one, but I would probably call this report uh, JWT not expired. Kind of crazy. But I quite like the phrase report for when it's not like a user action. I don't know, I'm not sold on that one. Um, but I'm going to bump that over here as well. We can always return to this later. And we're going to need something similar, which is going to be report JWT expired. Okay, so this now gets us to the sort of shape of our state machine. <laughs> yeah, pretty close, man, pretty close. <laughs> Is that a death mask emoji? Oh no, little robot, little robot. Um, yeah, pretty close. So we've got our shape now, um, and let's think, have we got any kind of uh, moments in time that are not represented by our state machine? I don't think currently we do. This is all that we kind of need really for, for implementing this. So, let's see if anything comes out in implementation, but for now, let's take this as the thing that we're focusing on. So, I'm going to create a new folder inside machines. Um, oh, look. Uh, yeah, there is actually no machines in there. Source machines, and let's create authstate.machine.ts. This is kind of a convention that I've picked up from using xstate codegen. If anyone's uh, used that before, it's a tool that me and kind of a couple of people collaborated on. Um, and I kind of just like calling these machine.ts. So we're going to go export const auth state machine equals create machine. And let's just represent the kind of um, the events and the states that we have here. So we know that our initial state is going to be checking if logged in. Uh, all right. Um, I'm going to have to do some kind of manual. Uh, talking and blah, blah 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 so what accent should I do this in I'm gonna start with Scottish I think so we've got the states here so we've got checking if logged in logged in it's been a while since I've done my Scottish actually so checking if logged in that's the first state then we've got a logged in state and then we've got a logged out state it's quite simple so far um, then We've got a, thanks Matt, yeah, I think moments in time is the right way to think about it. If you don't have, if, 
if you have a moment in time that's not covered, that's a good way to think that um, a piece of state is not adequately represented. Uh, we know that in the checking of logged in, we're going to have this on and we're going to go report jwt not expired uh, and that's going to target uh, logged in here report jwt expired boom 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 target uh, logged out logged in when you're in the logged in state and you log out uh, on log out target logged out and here it's just going to be the opposite so we're going to go from uh, log in to logged in that look all right i think so i think we're good um okay so now that we've got like the moments in time covered we've got the way that they link uh, all covered. We need to now start thinking about um, how we're actually going to manage this JWT. Um, so let's start first of all by thinking about how we get from. Or in fact, let me let me let me do something first because I, I want to be able to uh, have a fiddle with this while we're in the X state inspector. So I want to get this machine basically up and running here. And for this, I'm going to do uh, something uh, a little bit cheeky. No, it's, no, it's not actually that cheeky. This, this is where we get start getting into our global state conversation. I'm going to uh, do something which is what. Well, now nah, I'm, I'm going to save uh, save my reasoning for this uh, for a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this in my app, which is in under app.csx which in Next is kind of like the top level wrapper for all of your um, all of your page components. So here, I'm going to go const state send equals use machine, and it's going to be the auth state machine. Sorry about that. Um, and for this, I'm also going to pass in dev tools true so that it shows up in the xdate inspector. Cannot read post message of null, of course you can't. Uh, I'm going to do a cheeky little trick here, which is to disable hot reload, which is I'm going to get export const something equals this. I'm not going to explain my reasoning for that. If you want to know why it's uh, kind of it's an interesting way to disable hot reload, basically, in Next, it's just to export something that isn't a, a functional component. Okie dokie. So uh, I'm going to give this now. We do have our machine here. We have it just this machine x1 thing. And the reason it's appearing like this is because we haven't given the machine an ID yet. So I'm going to give it an ID of, no, nope, this is the wrong machine. We should be in auth state.machine.ts. We're going to call this auth state machine. Save that. And we should see auth state machine. Happy days. Let me make this, how's that for size? A bit bigger, a bit bigger? Yeah. Cool. We've got a nice little group here. We've got 12. Hello, everyone. Nice to make your acquaintance. Come and say hello in the chat if you fancy it. Can everyone vaguely see what I'm seeing here, which is this checking if logged in, got logged in, we got logged out, logged in, etc. Um, so how do we get from checking if logged in to any of the other states? We've got these events, but how are these events going to come about? The user isn't going to choose whether the report JWT expired. And the user isn't going to choose whether the report JWT not expired. So when you have these events um, that aren't kind of going to be coming from user action and kind of automatically need to happen based on code that you're running, we can use a service. And we're going to use a service by invoking a service. So inside the checking of logged in state, we're going to invoke a service, which I quite like because it kind of makes me feel like a warlock invoking a spell. So we're going to invoke and we're going to check if logged in. So I'm just going to put this in a kind of, um, uh, what do you call it, a little a service here in a, in a string here. And I can define that uh, later. So I am going to define it inside the machine options here, just for simplicity. So inside here, I can add services, check if logged in. And this is where I'm going to start getting a little bit opinionated. 
I really like writing my services in a particular way. The reason I like writing them in this particular way should become clear, um, but it's not to everyone's taste and different strokes for different folks, uh, but I quite like this approach. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an invoked callback here, which is we have, we're sort of passing a curried function inside the second function, the parameters for these. Inside here, by the way, you get access to context and event, but this isn't uh, very relevant for us because I don't think we're actually going to use context. Uh, inside here, we have a callback function. And this callback function can basically send events to the parent machine. This service in here, what it can do is we're basically going to check if, so if, if the user is logged in, then we're going to call back and the function we're going to call back is report JWT not expired. So if the JWT has not expired, we're going to call back that. If the JWT has expired, we're going to report JWT expired. That's correct, isn't it? Yep. So, does everyone see what's going on here? This is kind of, uh, the reason I like this is because it's very, very explicit what's going on. Um, there, there are other ways of writing this. We could write this as a promise where you error when the JWT has expired or, you know, or all sorts of stuff. But here it's very explicit what's going on and it keeps, it means you don't have to deal with any complex uh, syntax really. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> such a good pattern. I'm, I'm glad to see it. It's, it's really, really nice. All you've basically got to do is you, you've just got to think of this as like an actor that you're invoking, that you're saying, okay, right, you, sir, I would like you to manage some code for a second and then tell me what I should do next. And then inside here, all we've got to do is just listen on the on and then go to the right places. So let's, uh, let's do this logic now. I've grabbed a login details cache thing, which here is just going to kind of uh, grab some details for us and save some details for us in local storage. So let's now, um, uh, let's do this now. So if, so const GWT from cache equals, uh, let's go with Australian, I think, for this one. Uh, JWC from cache is, uh, I'm really sorry for this one because it's not my best, I think, uh, is login details, details, cache oh god it's all going wrong mate dot get uh and this returns a, J a jwt or null it should return uh so if jwt from cache uh we're going to report it's not expired else we're going to report it is expired so let's see how that works we have this uh, auth state machine here, and there we go. We've actually, we can already tell that we're logged out here because it looks like if I console log, sol.log, uh, JWT from cache, then because we haven't actually done any logging in or anything like that, console.log, yeah, there we go. JWT from cache is null. Okay. So, what's this telling us? Um, notice, by the way, that services don't need to be a... Um, oh, I want, I want to read Matt's comment because this looks really interesting. I've used this for a photo upload action to report progress. I haven't tried using it for things like network calls where it reports, works or fails. In the case of a network call with this pattern, you've had to explicitly watch for the error or success. I use the callback to perform the correct action. Yeah, what Matt's asking is, um, let's say that this code like arbitrarily fails. Let's say that this like is not a function. If we go like gift or something, um, so this yeah, gift is not a function. So currently, it's just failing the entire thing. Um, there are two ways of handling this. So what you could do is you could wrap it in a try catch and go um, call back some arbitrary error occurred error occurred like this which of course is going to happen um, or you could use an on error thing inside the invoke so you can go like this and just go target uh, let's give ourselves an error state here uh, target error 
I'm fairly sure this will work well if I don't get my syntax completely wrong. There we go. So you can use this pattern to kind of like, um, what what this does is it makes things a little bit, a little bit easier to modify than on done, because usually what you can, the way that you handle promises with this approach is you can grab an on done in here and go like target uh, logged in for instance, but I like this pattern because it makes um, it means you can have multiple ways that the um, that the callback service can complete and can work. I hope that makes sense that I've um, that I've covered everything there. For our implementation, or I'm not actually worried about the on error because I'm pretty like if this code goes wrong, then um, like something's really really wrong with my system and sort of it deserves to fail super hard. Um, sometimes what I like to think about errors if if uh, if I'm willing to bet my life that this code would like not will never ever fail then if I'm wrong then the website deserves to go down which is a little bit sadistic on my part but I, I quite like that part of my personality um, okay okay so we now needed to be able to log in basically and in order to log in um, we're kind of going off the beaten track a little bit in terms of uh, global state and that kind of thing, but we've got a little bit of work to actually manage the JWT inside the cache, because currently we're not actually um, we're not actually setting the JWT ever. All we're doing is we're just checking if the JWT is there, and if it's there, we're doing something. So, what I'm going to do mm -mm -mm, is when you have um, I, in X state, I would call this an action, or X state would call this an action, and an action is a kind of far and forget um, function which you can call, which never reports back to the um, uh, to the machine itself. All it does is it just goes, okay, I need to do something at this moment, then I can just ping and do it. So it's like a side effect of the machine running. Now, in XState, there are three ways that you can just sort of call actions. You can call it at a, a moment in time, so when you enter a state or when you exit a state, or you can call it when an event happens. So you can do it kind of uh, when you're, uh, for instance, if I wanted to, every time we logged out, or in fact, every time the JWT wasn't expired, or every time the JWT was expired, we could just go actions, and we pass it a function and we console.log no like that and of course I get my syntax wrong because even TypeScript can't help me if I insist on doing stupid things and there we go we've got our no because it happened during that target there if we were to move this somewhere else if we move it to an entry just there I just want to give you guys all the possible options so on entry here we're going to console log we entered there and we save and we entered it just there so what we can do then is let's work out where are we going to hey steve we've got steve ruiz in the chat steve is a kind of uh, a state machine doyen in his own right and he's got an amazing library called state designer let's designer where is it steve here it's super cool i'm just going to put it in the chat Steve's a banger. Um, so, okay, now that we've got all this fun stuff going on, we need to work out exactly the moment that we want to put the JWT in the cache. Because when we, um, at, like, that JWT's got to end up in there somehow. When do we think we need to do it? Let's go back to our Excalibur. Inside here, we know that the JWT needs to be in there when we're logged in. So that means we've got two choices, actually. We could either put it inside login here, so when you transition using that, or when we enter the state logged in. I'm minded to put it here, because it's at the moment that you transfer from the logged out to the logged in state, that's when we want to save the JWT that we've just acquired from our login. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to put it as an action on side on that transition. So here we go from logged out to login and actions 
we're going to save JWT. And I can declare this now. Well, in fact, I'm going to make that a bit more descriptive. Save JWT to local storage. So let's bang that into actions. I'm loving the Steve Ruiz love in the chat. That's good. Uh, save w JWT to local storage. And we just get to declare this as a function here. And I'm going to go login details cache dot set. And I've made this kind of expires that thing. Let's say it expires at. Oh, uh, I can't be bothered to work this out. I'm not sure if I can be bothered to plug in that logic either. But what we're going to do is stick that there. We also need to be able to delete the thing from the cache too, right? So this means that when we go from the logged out state to the login state, we're also going to need to delete the JWT from local storage. Notice how declarative this is, by the way. This is super nice kind of... Um, a super nice property of state machines. You just get to declare what your state sort of looks like, where you can go from bits to bits, and then you just, these side effects, it just feels like hanging on coats onto a hanging rail, right? You're just putting something there, putting something there. It's like hanging things up on a Christmas tree, right? You just get to put it exactly at the moment in time or at the event that you want to stick it on. I just, I mean, this is just so good for bug fixing and things. Uh, delete JWT from local storage. So I'm not going to implement this now because I actually forgot to implement it in my login details cache and I don't I want to spoil you the spay the boring details. Uh, or can I do it now if I do it in a funny accent? Let's just do an American accent I think. So uh, const delete details equals return local storage dot delete item Remove item is the key, and the key is login key. So I can go del equals delete details. I know it's bad APR practice to say del, but I just like saying del. Login details cache dot del, boom, and the dirt is gone. All right. So we've got our auth state machine now. Let's head over to our login form, and here is where we're going to basically be logging in. Now. Here's where we uh, get to something a little bit tricky, which is, and here's where we're officially going to start our global state discussion of X state. Our kind of our top level auth machine lives inside app.tsx. How are we? How on earth are we going to get like, like? Because we need to be able to send this an event. The event we need to send it is going to be the login event. How on earth are we going to get it there? We have uh, a couple of options. Uh, the first option is to pass it through props. All right? We could literally just go, okay, there's a component there. This component is in Next.js, the thing that you um, thing that renders your page. We could literally just bung it through props, right? That's kind of the easiest thing to do. So we go send, equal send. Uh, I might get some TypeScript errors here. I hope not. Uh, hopefully I've got my stuff turned down enough. Yes, I do. Good. Um, so here what we could do is when we click submit here, we just go send uh, log in. I'm using super loose TypeScript definitions at the moment. Sorry. Context. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to get to context in a second, Jay, because context is kind of how I prefer to do it. Um, like the basic way to do it is just literally through props. So you go, whoops, that's not a page. Got the login page, and then here we can go uh, username password submit. If we look at our auth state machine, we should just be able to log in, and there we go. Now we're in the logged in state here. And actually, if we refresh the page, yeah, then we've the JWT is in our context, and so it's saved there. So, but props are just not scalable, right? Like, you imagine this is like seven, ten components deep or something down a huge, great big tree. This ain't gonna work. So, let's try what Jay suggested. Let's do context. Um, I'm going to create some context very quickly by just going into authstatemachine.ts. I'm just going to bung it in here because I'm lazy. So I'm going to go export const uh, authstate provider equals, I um, know oh it's it's authstate context equals uh, react.createContext. And have I imported React? No, I can just import create context here. Uh, 
let's go for a northern accent for this sesh, I think. Uh, a default value, let's go object. And I'm just going to bung it in an any, I think so. Um, I hope you like this accent because I love it. Um, so now we need to export a provider. So inside app.tsx, we're going to wrap everything we got inside auth state context.provider. And inside there, we're going to bung that in there. And we're going to go value equals send. Now this is pretty similar to the implementation that we had before, except it's a little bit nicer, right? Um, it scales a lot better. Uh, the way that we use this, by the way, is we go const uh, send equals use context. So just using kind of idiomatic react here, and it's going to be auth state context. And here when we go, um, so I'm going to log out here, and then I submit login again, boom, it goes boom, up through context, and we um, and we get all our stuff working, basically. Um, so it's it's transferring from the bottom to the top. <laughs> Maybe you could also use the neat x state code gen for TypeScript goodness. Yes, I think I will use that at some point. I've heard the guy who made it is pretty decent. Um, I certainly will add it to this repo because it's uh, going to be, I think it's just a super useful uh, way to learn when all the types are fantastic for you. Um, so I, I am not a huge fan of this exact implementation. I like using context. Context makes sense, but um, I don't love passing in the send all the way down the tree. I wrote an article about this recently, actually, which is um, called "Just Use Props." Uh, maybe someone could share that in the in the thing. Um, the reason I don't like this is because it exposes kind of well. It means that you have your entire sort of there's this sort of dependency bleed going down the whole tree, which is like I think there's a way to express this more idiomatically and more reactly. Um, Specifically with send, it's kind of okay, because when you type this, like if I add some types into here, uh, we've got null in context, and I'm just going to grab an all state event here. So, ah uh, no, I'm, I'm not going to do this because it will be a pain to get it set up with the context. Sorry, but when you do add event types, there is it will sort of type check the events that you're passing up, which is useful. But I prefer to do things like this, which is I prefer to go login, uh, yeah, handle login, send log in. This means that, um, whoop, not log in. This means that you would have handle login there, and you would say handle login here. The reason I prefer this, I, um, I prefer this quite a lot over the other version. Yeah, is exactly as um, as Hader M A Abood is saying. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. I definitely did. Is you're hiding information basically. You're just providing this lovely abstraction down to your um, uh, context sort of consumer, and yeah, exactly. You're just literally sending on login as a prop basically. You're you're saying that this is how you interact with the state machine. This is exactly what you send. Um, and you don't need to uh, worry about any of the other events. So, for instance, down in the sort of base down here, like where we use this, we could potentially be sending like report JWC not expired or things like that. But this way, you're only exposing what you want the public facing methods of your uh, machine to be. This is super crucial. I find myself, um, so in my job, I'm lead of a small team, and what I tend to um, what I tend to do is I will tend to manage the sort of more complex state and like the sort of higher level stuff and then like what I like to think of as the, the back of the front end and then the other people on my team will handle more like the screens and that sort of thing. Uh, this obviously isn't always true but uh, it's kind of been true for the last couple of projects. So what this means is I can basically hold all of the um, all of the states kind of in uh, in my head and deal with uh, the x state stuff and they can contribute if needed 
but I get to just give them this beautiful little API that they can just use, right? Like it's all perfectly type checked, all, all um, very clear and documented by the types. And I'm not just giving them kind of big, strange uh, abstractions, which they don't, might not know how to use. That's my reasoning for this. So yeah, you're right. Um, so the context thing, once or twice on the browser window, yes, of course. How's that, a bit better? I, feel, I'm, I have a feeling I'm not broadcasting like um, uh, 20p. Interesting. So, Heyda M.A. Abood is saying, I think that the context here could be an anti-pattern. I'm intrigued by that. I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to uh, ping that uh, a little bit more in the chat and explain yourself a bit more. I use this approach quite a lot of work, actually, which is uh, sort of where I'm, I'm bringing it from, and I like it. I want to show you an alternative, though. Thank you, Steve. Good. So the alternative is, um, let's think about uh, the type of state this is. As I said before, this state is, um, it covers the entire time range of our app. It starts when the user loads the browser window and it ends when the user quits out of the browser window. State that's like that and state that you don't need to duplicate and it only happens once um, is, we can think of it as like a global singleton, right? This state will only ever occur once, only needs to be invoked once, and um, all that fun stuff. That means that it's kind of like a Redux store. If you guys have ever used Redux, Redux store is basically a singleton that sits outside of your React tree that you can uh, subscribe to, that you can, or you can uh, ping events to it, and you can read the state from it. Let's imagine what this would look like now if we did the same thing. So, yeah, okay. Uh, you're right. In this, uh, I'm just going to ask how... No, in fact, I'm going to focus on this and then maybe uh, reference the chat in a second. So, the way that this would work is inside of auth state machine, we're no longer going to use this inside our top level app here. In fact, I'm just going to commit this. Uh, whip. I whip my hair back and forth and then I'm going to... Um, now, I'm just going to roll on this branch for a bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of the all state context. Get out of here. I don't need to send send here anymore. That's good. And now my app here is just completely, it doesn't know about the uh, auth state machine at all. It hasn't even got use machine inside it. So inside here, I'm no longer going to export this. I'm actually going to, and I can delete this, of course. I'm now going to interpret the auth state machine. Interpret it like a seer. And I'm going to say uh, const auth state service equals interpret auth state machine. And I'm actually going to start it as well. Now what on earth have I just done there? If we look at the type of this, um, well actually this may not mean anything to you but it means something to me which is it's this is an interpreted machine. This is a service. Um, so if I look inside use service uh, x state, uh, yeah, here we go. Um, is this talking about what I want it to talk about? Maybe not. Um, this is basically a running machine. When I call start on my interpreted machine here, what it's going to do is it's going to boom. suddenly the machine has begun. This is kind of like running use machine inside your React component. This is what use machine does under the hood. It starts your machine into a service. It gives it the uh, old vaults and it turns it into Frankenstein's monster. So this, what I'm doing is I'm doing this outside of the React tree. And what I can do is I can just go inside login if I want to. Instead of going... Um, all of this stuff, like handle login, blah, 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 blah. I can just go, in fact, I can do this in a really sweet way that I just thought of. I can go export const handle login is a function which just goes to all state service and sends it a log in. So there's a kind of, there's a slight little bug with next here, which I tried earlier which is where it doesn't show up inside this thing here. Uh, what's happening? Oh, I need to save the file. 
Um, and I need to grab this too, although I don't think it's going to fail. Yeah. So I've grabbed handle login from machines.authstate.machine. So again, as I said, it's not going to uh, do it here. But when I click this handle login, I'm just going to add a console log to say um, what state we're in. And this is a great little use of an entry action as well. So inside logged in, I'm going to go console log logged in. And then inside logged out, I'm going to console log logged out. So let's see where we are right now. We should be, I have a feeling, in the logged in state. OK, I'm going to grab, uh, yeah, clear all of my site data for localhost 3000. Local storage is not defined. No! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, man. I need to wrap up this crap in if type of window not equal undefined, then run this. Otherwise, return null. How about that, you little scumbag? Yes, that fixed you. Good. Um, OK, so let's check the console, see where we are. We should be logged out now. Yep, we're in logged out. But when I ping logged in over to this, then it should console log us when we get into the logged in state. Poof. There we go. So we have a running service, which is just kind of hanging out with our app here. We now know that the, the JWT, if I go into my local storage, it should be in here. There we go. Unique key expires at this, which is what we added. If I refresh the page now, our service is going to kick in again. It's going to be in checking if logged in. And then it's going to go into the logged in state. Da, 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 logged in. Perfect. So this is kind of acting like a Redux store now, which is we can send events to it even though it's not within the React tree. We don't need to manage any context or anything like that because it's sort of not with our app at all. Um, so what this means, we've got to handle login, handle all state service. How do we actually subscribe to this state within our app? If I remove these entry actions, get rid of that crud, I can go into login.tsx and I can just use the running service that we've got going on. So I can go const state uh, equals use service auth state service. Grab that. What's happening? Yes, you're fine. And there we go. And now we can console log state.value. And state.value, as you can see, is coming from the login.tsx file. And it says, uh, I'm going to zoom in for Steve, because he's got bad eyes apparently, uh, logged in. There we go. So what do you guys think of this? I'm really interested in uh, your thoughts here. I don't know quite where I stand with this uh, as opposed to the context stuff. This looks like it's more uh, elegant, but I don't know if it is. Um, part of the reason why this... Uh, yeah, I thought you might like this one. I thought you might like this one, Hader, hey Emma Bood. Um, what, what, what about it is better? You do have really small eyes. Steve Rees has small eyes. You heard it here first, guys. Um, he's like Millhouse, but with the glasses. I don't even know if you wear glasses. I'm probably stepping way out of line here, saying you have small eyes. Really sorry. Uh, this is really, uh, yeah, it does read well. Um, it sort of reads well. Um, I'm, I'm sort of, I don't know about this approach. Um, for me, it's. Uh, if you read the Just Use Props article, uh, you might understand why I'm not sort of into this so much, which is I, I quite like using um, context and um, idiomatic React. Uh, oh, by the way, when I'm talking, feel free to uh, ping some questions about this. Um, I quite like using idiomatic React for um, basically as much as you can get away with with state machines. Um, there's no material difference between having a machine inside a context provider uh, and having a machine here. You get some performance gains with this. 
small ones, but you do get them, which is that if the service updates, then only this file, only this component will update, or anywhere that you're using that service. I have, I'm not even sure if uh, if that's true. Even um, I mean, I mean, like, sure, like if if you have, uh, I'm not particularly making myself clear. At the moment, there are no selectors here, right? Anytime the state changes or the state dot value, state dot context or uh, any sort of new event is dispatched to the state to make a change, then this component is going to re-render. Uh, if you work with context, then you've got a bit more fiddling around to do, uh, because if this is in a use, use machine, let me just sort of stash what we got here. Uh, get stash. Get stash always feels really violent to me. Get stash, son! Um, if you're using a context provider, then in theory, any time that the um, where is it? It's inside app.csx, isn't it? Any time this state changes, then um, anything that uh, relies on it is going to re-render too. So, use service in theory could be more performant. What I don't particularly dig about it is the fact that you're doing exactly um, what I said I didn't like before, which is you're exposing the entire um, state object down to its children. And uh, you're you're not adding any kind of like fancy wrapper, but of course you could do that. You know you could say uh, git stash apply, grab this back in. Uh, you could bung some stuff in here, and you could go export const use auth state service, and make a kind of intermediary wrapper where you say cause state send equals use service or state service or something similar, and then in there you returned a handle login which just sends the login. So, maybe I'm wrong, man. I don't know. Yeah, so, okay, let me get to the uh, the questions that you've got. What happens, Jay says, what happens with uh, machines that change or need to be created multiple times? Yeah, this is singleton only. Um, this is, Yeah, this is another reason why I don't medium like this. Let's say that you have uh, some global state or some sort of semi-global state, like state that needs to um, first. Yeah, this is a great one. Let's imagine that you have some state which you think is a singleton. You're pretty sure it's a singleton, um, but you build the app for a couple of weeks and then you realise, oh no, it's not a singleton. It actually only needs to be. It doesn't live for like the entire lifetime of the app. Let's say. Or you have to like start it uh, at a point in time where it only needs to cover a portion of the app, or it needs to be invoked twice. Oh bugger! With context, this is really easy to do. All you all you need to manage is React, right? You just render the component twice. With this pattern, you've kind of got to extract it out of there and put it into React, or do something really cack-handed, where you like um, save it in an array or something, or save it with an ID or something weird, right? You've got to do something strange there. And at that point, you might wish that you'd put it in React in the first place. So yeah, it is just for singletons. Like, yeah, it's, it feels like an injected service from the Angular world. I've not used Angular, but I know what you mean. It's it's like an external dependency that doesn't live inside your tree at all, um, which is quite cool, to be honest. It sort of reminds me of um, Jotai, Valtio, that sort of thing. Like, um, or if I just use ZooStand as an example, is this a good example? I'm not very familiar with this stuff, I have to say. Yeah, here we go. So, yeah, you, you create a store um, in ZooStand, and it sort of sits outside your React tree, and then you can use the store by um, with a quite a nice little selector API here to uh, grab things from it. This is basically the same idea. It's like an atom that you create outside the React tree, which you can import, but it's only really for singletons. Yeah, um, I think I covered the performance definitions, uh, Viganchev. Um, I think I did. Uh, I think I think I think. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything I missed. Um, I'm not. I'm not too hot performance-wise. Probably on the because of the problem state. Um, problem sort of space I'm in. Um, mostly we build kind of infrastructure type type apps uh, where we're 
uh, dealing with a specific problem and we kind of know uh, the devices that people are going to be using and mostly they're high-end devices. So I'm not the best person to answer about performance, but I think that Hader and Mabood is right in that context does give you potentially more foot guns than this approach. Um, does this help where states where the user refreshes the... Yeah, that's interesting. Does this help with states where the user refreshes the page? That's a cool question. Um, I'm going to answer that question hopefully in a cool way. Uh, let's say that... Um, let's say that this wasn't an auth state machine. Let's say that we had some slightly different requirements here where we didn't want... Um, we never actually wanted this checking of logged in thing. Let's say that this was a, a, a data cache that we knew that, like, let's say it was a list of currencies or something. We know that the list of currencies is probably not going to change all that much and we can set a very long expiry time on that data. What that means is we can actually save the entire um, sort of result of, like, we can save that data in local storage and then just refresh it as we go. So, oh, I got a new follower. Hey! Um, I can't even see who that is. Trigger Disco 78. Um, absolute banger. I think. It's a, yeah, it's Gavin. Hey, dude. Uh, so, I hope it's Gavin. <laughs> the way that we can do this is that we can uh, actually save the entire state of the machine in local storage as we go. So, I'm going to interpret all state machine dot start and this is where it gets a bit funky we can go auth state service dot on transition and I think this listener needs to be a uh, I think this is state yeah I'm acting on the seat of my pants here by the way guys so I'm gonna go local storage dot set item uh, state json dot stringify state what this means is that any time that my um, auth state service transitions, it, every time it goes to a new state, it's going to save that state inside local storage. Let's just check that that's working. Handle login, not exported by that. Where are you failing? There. Um, ah, that's because I deleted some crucial code. Export const handle login equals. Uh, what was it, guys? It was auth state service. Hey, Gavin. Hey, Dan. Uh, send log in. Perfect. Or just Hader. All right, just Hader. I've been told uh, there is no local storage if window. Sorry. The the reason this is this is sort of falling over is because uh, not equal undefined is because we're using Next.js. So this this stuff is actually um, is done on the server. Uh, it's, or rather it's both done on the server and in the window, I have a feeling. So now, auth state service to on transition, we should have an item in our local storage called state, which is the JSON stringified state, which is just here. Uh, Jay, I'm not sure if you've seen this before, but if you haven't seen this, it's a very cool pattern. Uh, yeah, you can see just there, we have state, yeah, which is this actions, blah, 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 blah stop, activities, check logged in. So now all we need to do is when we start the machine, we need to grab it from local storage. So we can start it and we can actually pass it a little um, argument here, which is going to be json.pass uh, local storage dot get item. Ah, oh, now this is going to fail, isn't it? Uh, going to have to write some funky code here. Type of window not equal undefined. And then json.pass local storage dot get item state uh, or undefined. You're gonna yell at me TypeScript. No, okay. So this might be a little bit hard to pass, but if we're in login, okay, yeah, we're in login.tsx. The idea here is that we should um, we should the way this works is that we should never reach that checking if logged in state because what we're doing is we're saying we're starting off the auth state or state service with what we're getting from local storage so we're saying okay we've got this little thing from uh, from local storage and we're going to save it in there and that's where we're going to start our machine from and let's see if that works 
So my idea here is that we're console logging state.value inside login, and there we go. We start off in logged in. We never actually get to the uh, where's our old state machine? We're never actually in the checking if logged in state because we're refreshing our token from um, from local storage. So that's a cool way to do this with with this kind of singleton. I think you can do this uh, with uh, use machine, but it's a it's a nice little pattern to know about. Something like that is a good idea until you change the state machine and deprecate a previous state. All users will not be able to use the app. Yeah, the man's got it. Uh, which is you've got to be really, really careful about this and maybe tie it into like a a content hash of your um, of all the code in your bloody code base, um, which can be done during build. But yeah, it's no fun. Uh, what Jay's saying is that um, if this state no longer exists in the app, then uh, it's not going to go well for your users, basically. Uh, so yeah, this in theory, if your state machine never changes, which ain't ever going to be true, then you could try this. But maybe it's not the best idea. Next question: uh, Would you save each machine individually? Sorry, Jay, I don't, I don't quite know what you mean uh, by that. Could you go into a bit more detail? Uh, has anyone got any more questions, uh, either on a more advanced level or on a more basic level, kind of about how I constructed this state machine? Or anybody want some code reviewed, or did I go too fast over anything? Any kind of crap like that, let me know. This is, this is question time. We're going to be finishing in a, whoops, about uh, seven minutes. So, yeah, I'm at your service, basically. Let me know if there's anything that I've missed. Um, and let me start. Whoa, what happened there? Steve, you contribute to this? What happened there? Oof. Oh, thanks, Jay. Um, so, let me start wrapping up here. Um, these two are the main approaches that I see for um, for doing X state and global state, this kind of thing. I much prefer the context one, um, mainly because it's more flexible. You can do uh, you can choose which parts of your machine and which parts of your service you expose down to your users, and you it does everything you need. And certainly in in the space that I'm in, it's been very very cool, and we've used it in. I think three or four of our um, previous projects that have uh, all gone live to production. The thing that's good about it is that X, it means that XState can play to its strengths. I think that XState is at its best when it's orchestrating complicated state in a way that's easily maintainable. We saw that in this uh, machine here, we've really all, all we've got to do is like uh, work out the states and work out the links between them. And from there, it's just some kind of arbitrary code to take us from place to place. Or arbitrary user events uh, drawn out from here. To kind of wrap up the circle on this login.tsx, I'm just going to grab a... Um, we're going to go const um, is logged in equals state.matches uh, logged in. And if is logged in we're going to return a button which is going to go on click and by the way I'm just doing this to give you some time to ask questions if you'd like so I'm not uh, grabbing dead time so let's go log out and this is going to uh, you can by the way just grab send from here this is perfectly possible too and you can go send log out so if we save that we should be able to go into my app uh, there we go and we've logged out and submit. Uh, let's see what's going on in the thing. Machine context or React context. Okay, yeah, sorry, Gavin. Um, yeah, I was saying that, uh, isn't it lovely when two of your favorite tools uh, use exactly the same terminology for the same thing? I was talking about uh, React context as the method for passing things down um, through, uh, yeah, through the React tree from the top, basically. Let me think. Um, I think then, if anyone's got any more questions, then feel free to ask them, but I think we might. Yeah, Gavin, you're right. Um, let's, let's finish off by posting a couple of resources in the chat for people who stumble upon this. Uh, the Cypress Real World app, as Gavin mentioned, is super duper good for this. And in fact, um, where is it? 
let's actually look at this because it's a really handy way to uh, they have a source machines folder and inside this auth machine, I'm going to bump up the size by the way so you can actually see this crap um, they have a very similar kind of um, situation to what we have they have a unauthorized state it looks like a, a sign up state as well which we it's not in our requirements and a refreshing state it's funny they they use the on duns and the uh oh yeah cheers dude thanks matt for uh, for posting that um and they do a kind of perform sign up stuff um here we go and here's the the fun stuff so they're doing exactly what we um discussed on stream a minute ago which is they're grabbing the auth state from the uh, from local storage and then pumping that into state definition um let me see if you guys have got any oh, any questions um oh yeah i'll just post this in the uh in the chat as well hey do would i program a game using x state on stream i'd love to yeah that sounds sick um games are like inherently gold for x state because they're they're super lovely to diagram um the if you think about it the i a lot of people ask me especially on twitter when is the best time to reach for x state when is x state really really good when when is it going to give you the most bang for your buck i would say when um as i talked about on stream a little bit earlier if you think about your app as like points in time the the biggest diversity that you have in those points in time, the 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 more dense that picture looks, then X state the better X state is going to perform. If your app looks really really simple, if like I wouldn't use X state on a freaking blog or something like that, I wouldn't use it on a and we don't use it. In fact, at my work on like simple list pages, for instance, like where you have you view a list of something and you click to view other things, um, because the the timescales for that are really simple. Really, it's just you're resolving a promise to go and get the data, right? You have no data at the start, so you're pending the data, and you load the data, and you have maybe an error state or something like that. So things where your points in time are really, really um, easy to reason about, X state won't do that much for you. Things where they're harder um, or remotely complex, X state is going to eat it for breakfast. It's going to destroy it, and it's going to make your life easier when thinking about those points in time. Um, before you start, we use it now with a client to design the pages flow, events between them, and what goes on the page. Yeah, yeah, and this um, uh, Jay Jay's saying where he uses it in his process, um, and the fact that X state is visual not only helps um, you as developers, but also helps uh, any stakeholders that want to look at the uh, like look at the logic of the code or let's say that you're discussing it with them as like an early stage in your process. I know that David has been working quite hard on a visual builder for X states, which is the thing that I'm personally most excited excited about and invested in. Like when I first heard of that, I don't know, it might have been a f uh, quite a few months ago. Need some water, sorry. I just thought, damn, damn, if like I'm using this sort of random third party tool for, um, uh, for drawing the state chart out, um, but if I could do that visually and work that out all in my head and work it out with someone who necessarily wasn't so techy, that would save a lot of stress. And of course, we can do that with, uh, I might just show off Steve's tool because he's here. Uh, statedesigner.now.sh. Steve, where is this hosted? Ah, check out the ID. Uh, get started. I think I've logged into this before. I'm just going to bump this onto the other screen just so I don't accidentally expose any personal details. Ah, oh, so cool. So you can create a new wonderful project, and you see, like this is this is going to be part of the next generation of tools. I think, like you're looking at these little states as they're displayed here. It's hovering over on the right hand side. Uh, toggled on, toggled off, let's say toggled sideways, whatever. Uh, on. Oh, Steve, four tabs. Dude. Uh, toggled. It's got a slightly different API to XState, uh, but you can see basically it's very inspired by it. Toggle to funky. 
let's say, uh, or toggled on. Let's see, how do I save this? Oh, I can, of course I can press Command S. I can press toggle to go to there. Got some beautiful little arrows here. Like, this is this is a super cool like demonstration of what can be done. Um, yeah, you're right. It's 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 amazing actually. Um, I'm gonna pump this in the uh, in the chat so you guys can check it out. But thank you so much for joining. Um, this has been a super fun stream as always. Uh, I'm going to be back at the same time on Wednesday, so it's 8 p.m. GMT. Um, I think 3 p.m. EST for you American folks. Um, thank you so much for joining. It's been really, really awesome. Uh, this video will be going up on YouTube. Um, and I will see you in the X State Discord. Uh, come find me on Twitter if you have any more questions. Um, and cheers, everyone, for, for engaging and for making this a really, really fun stream. I'll also post the GitHub link to, uh, to that as well. Um, see you soon. Cheers, everyone.